that these two boxes of Rallyman are jam-packed with possibilities, and it's my intention to highlight all of the interesting things you can do with them. This is Shakedown. In today's Shakedown, I'm a little under the weather, but I'm hoping to tinker under the hood of a car that we hope will take us up through the clouds to the summit of the mountain, rather than through the trees for a slide down its side. There are two hill climbs that are familiar to me, and I say that as someone who has brought the British Hill Climb Championship to Rallyman. The first is the Val de Terres, what used to be my local hill climb. Less than 800 metres from start to finish, you'll be taken through 10 turns under the shade of the trees, climbing 70 metres in 30 seconds. It's about as far from the other hill climb I'm familiar with as you can get. Pikes Peak, Colorado. From the start line, a 20 km route takes you through 156 turns. You ascend 1,440 metres during your 8, 9, 10 minute run. Twice as high as the Val de Terres hill climb is long. You will reach so far above sea level that trees do not grow and the clouds overhead will soon be found beneath you. Your engine, let alone your lungs, will struggle to find oxygen. Don't make any mistakes, it'll only take one to ruin your day. Today we race to the clouds on O'Daly's Pikes Peak 2010, the route before it was paved over completely, making life much more difficult for board gamers to recreate without having duplicate boxes of Rallyman. Though you'll still need a lot of Rallyman tiles to make it in full, not to mention a lot of space, though there are ways around that as we'll see later. There are a few tokens from the climb expansion to modify some of the dice placement rules way up on the summit, and a bunch of climb tiles scattered throughout would allow us to learn the rules for ascending through an uphill tile. The most interesting part of the climb expansion are the unlimited dashboards, but because I like to tell stories in my games, I'm going to limit myself just a little, as though I've been tinkering with a stock R5 rather than creating something truly unlimited from scratch. That means we're giving up some valuable dashboard space to the no Sisu and no Gear 6 tokens. You might think that I can get rid of these tokens and just not use Gear 6, but to deliberately have a useless token or two on my dashboard means I have to maximize whatever space is left, as though we're building around either a physical limitation with the car or some regulations concerning vehicle class and so on. At the same time though, I do want to have fun playing Rallyman, so we'll get rid of the other tokens from the basic R5 setup and put in five gears, except we've swapped third for another second. Nothing against the number three, I just think a couple of gear twos and a boost die will make the decision to go flat out all the more appealing. I wouldn't be surprised if I put myself in a worse position now, statistically, but it's what feels good that matters, right? A couple of coast die complete our basic dashboard, being on gravel gives us a brake die, and being on asphalt doubles up our boost and brake dice, so we're very much tuned for the tarmac on this course. Three hazards for the entire climb keeps things nice and simple as well. Normally we'd be doing three runs against our opponents and fine-tuning our dashboards in between, but in the interests of time this will be a one-and-done challenge to show off this epic hill climb and some of the climb-specific rules. The weather may change an awful lot on the real mountain, but in Solo Rallyman there's no such worry, not yet at least, though the damage bag does include boost die damage, so anything and everything on this car can break, and I sure hope it doesn't. Pike's Peak may fit on O'Daly's floor, but it doesn't fit on mine, so I'm going to have to stack the tiles onto the table and pull from that stack as and when I need something to race into. As an added personal challenge, one that you don't have to follow along with, I'm going to be laying these tiles out from memory as though I'm alone in my car desperately trying to remember whether it's this corner I need to slow down for or the next one. The tiles will be in the right order, I'm not absolutely mad, but as to whether the corners go left or right, that'll be on me. Either I'll get it right and it'll feel like I've been running up this hill for decades, or I'll look a right fool and have an asterisk next to my time in the record books, assuming I get there. Let's cut the chat and find out. That stack of tiles is as big as Pike's Peak itself. Uh, let's work our way through them. Uh, we're going to hope that our low gears and coast die are going to roll favorably. Um, there is less chance of them to roll hazards when they only have one hazard on them. But we've only got three four-hour turns, and we've rolled two of them on the first turn as we set off into the great unknown. Uh, right, I am going to drop down to gear four, and then... Um, that will allow us to break to gear two with just the one brake die. 
Uh, and then we can coast through the corner and we can boost all the way up to five using both our boost die and do something like that. Uh, if I want one extra focus, I could do that, uh, make my roll even riskier. Um, if it goes wrong, I can blame it on my cold. Uh, it hasn't gone wrong. Clearly my cold is not enough of a issue for me. Shuffle these tiles down. Now, most of the next section is forced, thanks to these split tiles from the GT expansions. Uh, so our lives are made easier. I'm going to put those out like that. And that's the last uh, asphalt tile before we head into the dirt. I don't want to end in fifth gear on that space. Do I want to end in fourth there or do I want to end in fifth somewhere over here? I think I'll take the hit on the time and end in fourth over there. Um, in order to respect speed limits, uh, we're going to have to go the long way. Uh, we also have to break down to second gear uh, like that. And then we are going to have to drop to first and coast through. So I'm going to roll these one by one. There are a lot of brake dice that are concerning me. One of them has rolled a hazard. Uh, the one is good, the coast is good, the coast is good, the other two is good, and the boost up to four is good. So we now have to slam on the brakes to get down to first, and we're going to coast through the next couple of corners. Uh, we're in second gear. We can then boost up to fourth and finish in fifth. Uh, that is my plan. Um, once again, that's going one by one. Uh, again, there is a hazard on the brake and there is a hazard on our first coast. I'm going to risk rolling this. That is safe. I'm going to risk rolling the two. That is safe. Uh, and that will cost me six focus to get up to fifth gear on that turn. Uh, we're now heading on to the dirt section. So at some point during this turn or the next, we are going to lose a brake die and a uh, boost die as I work out which way these tiles go. I think it's something like that. So we have to make use of what we've got when we've got it. Uh, that means breaking down to gear two on the asphalt. Um, we have only one boost on the dirt, so we have to be in gear two in order to get to gear four. Um, we've got two coasts, so I can push these dice down and do something like that. Um, I would like more focus than what I've got, but that is still a risky set of dice. That's basically all of our dice. So I don't want to risk it, especially when I still have a break die that is rolling hazards. Um, we are good so far otherwise. Uh, there is a hazard on the four. So I'm going to pay one second, one focus to secure gear five. Uh, and I need to get some focus back. Uh, we can't break down to gear three for obvious reasons. So we're going to have to use our gear four here. Break down to gear two and unfortunately end in a low gear over here somewhere. Um, if we um, use the drift or slide space, for the gear five, we can eke out one extra second if we go flat out. Um, and if we crash, then we can at least engineer a crash in a low gear. So let's hope for the best. Uh, it won't be good for our time. 
But I want some focus back. Uh, two hazards as we slide through the hairpin. That is going over there. Uh, I think that comes around here in order to switch back. Uh, this then goes that way. Uh, and if it doesn't, I will remind myself. I can end my turn in fifth in the drift space. I can't end it next to it because I don't have the brakes to get down to second gear. So if I want to end my turn there in fifth, and I want to maximize um, the amount of dice I roll for the purposes of generating some focus, then I'm going to have to do something like this. We've got lots of drift spaces to um, use. So I can do that. And I am going to roll flat out. Uh, hopefully, we are good to do so. Uh, we have just the one hazard slide to a stop in fifth gear. We have to drop down to gear four in order to break down to gear two. And I think uh, once again, we're going to be ending our turn in second gear. Uh, not ideal. Um, I would have perhaps had to have made use of putting my brakes on the dirt in order to get the most out of my car. That will be something for the next run, uh, should there be one. Let's go flat out on these. Again, if I can't finish in a high gear, then I at least want some seconds back uh, for going flat out. That is a flawless flat out roll. Can we make it up to fifth gear on this turn? I believe we can. And we can do it uh, in the sliding space like that. Um, do I want to eke out the seconds with an extra sliding space down here? Yes, I certainly do. And we're going to go flat out on those. Um, hopefully, all will go well. We have just the one hazard on a coast eye. I don't know the corner names on Pike's Peak. Um, I will have to add them in afterwards. Uh, but this looks right. And if it's not right, then it's still a challenge. Uh, we're in fifth gear. Uh, we can't break down to gear three. We also can't break down to gear two because we don't have enough brakes. So we are going to have to go the long way. And that means uh, sliding around the outside of that corner in gear four. We're going to have to, in fact, just do that in order to keep our time up. So let's, unless we want to get further down the course and end in first gear in order to set ourselves up for a run through this technical section. Uh, but I think we can do that on the next turn. So let's just get these out of the way as we end in gear five. Because we're never going to get up to gear five, uh, I'm going to make use of it to go down through the gears, uh, break down into second, and then obey the speed limit in first, coast and obey the speed limit in first, and then emerge in second. Uh, we are going to roll those flat out. I've got a load of focus, but this is hopefully a safe uh, car. Uh, there is just the one hazard at the end of that turn as we make it through all of these tiles. I don't think we can end in fourth there. Let's think one coast coast or indeed two coast coast one two. Oh, we can. So uh, two uh, coast coast one and then out in seconds. We need to boost up to fourth. And then we can finish in fifth. Uh, now, we can't break down to second gear from there, we can't break down to third, so we're going to have to make use of the sliding space in order to do that, but we can end our turn in fifth gear, which will make up our time. Uh, again, I'm going to risk going flat out. 
Uh, no hazards whatsoever as we make it through this section. I have no idea what turn number we are on. Um, I don't even know how far up the hill we are. That couldn't go that way because of the previous tile. So that goes like that. Uh, we're coming to another tarmac section though. Uh, there is more tarmac on this course than there is dirt. Uh, there is also a hay bale on the hairpin to make us uh, not use the long space. Um, so we will put that there. Uh, that's enough tiles for the moment. We are in fifth gear. We need to be in fourth in order to break down to second on the inside. And then we can coast once again. We can't get up to fifth, so we better set ourselves up for the upcoming corners, in which case we will go down here into second gear. Um, and again, I think we'll go flat out on that to end in second. Oh, that was bad. We have got four hazards. Uh, luckily for us, they were on gear two. Unluckily for us, we can't stretch out the distance because both of our gear two and our brake and our gear four show a hazard. So we are losing control right here in the second space of the hairpin. Um, we are going to be in second gear. Um, uh, however, we have drawn a Sisu. Uh, unfortunately, we can't continue our turn, but I will take a Sisu over a crash. Can we get out? No, we still can't get out of this corner uh, unless we do that. Uh, and then up to second. Um, do I want to end in first gear? Preferably not. In which case, I would have to end in fourth. That would need a boost in second. And then I could do something like that. And we can make our focus back. Uh, not that we've lost many. We certainly have a pile that we're sat on. And then we'll have to go the long way around that hairpin. So let's try to save our run by rolling those flat out. That was two hazards. So we need to break down to second gear. We have to drift around the outside. We can finish in fifth, uh, but we will have to do so on the... Oh, no, we'll have two breaks, won't we? Uh, but it's a gear one corner. So we do have to make use of the sliding space to do something like that. Uh, and then break down on the next turn. A risky break maneuver, but we are coming on to tarmac where our car is better. We are going to go flat out on this dice. Uh, we absolutely shouldn't have. We are currently crashing in fifth gear. Right, so breaking down to two was fine. Uh, we've got Hazard on the coast. There is no way of avoiding that unless I drop into that speed limit on the hairpin. Uh, I'm in gear two in a gear one space. We have not picked up any damage and unfortunately we're going to end our turn. We're in gear zero. We have um, a gear one hairpin coming up. Uh, we are now on the tarmac. So we can make use of lots of boost dice and we're going to need to make use of one there. And that will, I think, be us. That will allow us to break down to gear one on the next turn and end in gear five to try and offset some of this time penalties that we've been picking up for our rash actions. Uh, we are going to go flat out. We are going to get two hazards. So if that one goes uphill, then that has to go... Uh, does it go like that? 
Does that look right? It looks wibbly enough for Pike's Peak, doesn't it? We're in fifth gear. Uh, we are going to drop down to fourth gear and use our brake dice now that we're on the asphalt to drop down to first gear. And that will allow us to get up through the gears at uh, second. I think I want to end in fifth if I can. So I will do that. Um, do I want to go through the shortcut? I think that's probably a risk. I think I'm not going to risk it, uh, despite the amount of times I've gone flat out. Uh, this is a turn where I won't be. Um, I'm going to do something like that. Uh, let's see how we go. The gear four is good. Uh, there is a hazard on one of the brakes. Coasts are good. Two is good. And finally, the boost up to fifth gear is good. Now I've decided to avoid the shortcut, which means we are probably going to have a turn where we uh, go around the outside like that. Can I get up to fifth there? Um, let's see, I have to be in second there and in first there and in second here, which means I can, and that will put us in a good position for this climb tile where we can finally uh, learn the rules to ascending up a tile. I am going to risk going flat out with this roll. Um, I am going to hope that I have prepared the car well. We have two hazards, and importantly, that is not a loss of control. That can go either way, but which way does it go? I think it goes that way. Uh, this is easy to put down. Uh, that one goes over there, and there is a big run of hairpins. So on a climb tile, you have to put your gears in descending order. Uh, like that. Uh, it says that you have to descend one by one, so I'm not even sure that I could put my gear two die after the gear four uh, because of this minus one arrow. So in order to get around that, what we can do is make use of a coast die, but we have to also put a boost die on it in order to keep our speed up as we climb as high as we can over this tile. So this is what we're going to do on this climb tile. And then the rest of the run proceeds as normal, where we can, let's see, we can coast in fourth, and then we can break down to first gear, and then come out with a couple of second gears. So I'm going to do something like that and end in second gear. I'm going to roll one by one. That uh, break over there is probably going to cost us. Uh, again, these have to be rolled together because they're in the same space, but they are good. Four is our first hazard. Uh, will our brakes hold out? Uh, no, they won't. We have lost control in first gear on the kink in the road. We are going to put down gear one, Gear. Let's think. I can only I can make it through uh, this hairpin, and then I can make use of the shortcut, and then boost up to gear four, and then into fifth gear like that. So we are going to go through a shortcut on this um, turn. I do want to go flat out on those dice. Despite crashing just on the last turn, I like the look of the dice. Uh, see, they were good dice. They were absolutely flawless. We have made it through the shortcut and we come into the twisty section where I'm going to need yet more tiles. Um, I don't want to end in fifth too close to this hairpin. Uh, it would be good for the time, but uh, not good for the brakes. So we instead are going to break down to second here. 
uh, we can coast through the outside of the hairpin. Uh, we can drop to first, uh, into second, and then boost up to gear four. Uh, I'm going to roll those one by one because of this uh, strong break. There we are, two hazards on the break dice. Um, I don't want to use all of this focus if I can get away with it. Uh, so we're in gear two. Uh, we're still in gear two. We're still in gear two. We're still in gear one. Uh, but we haven't crashed. And uh, now we have. Uh, push my luck too far there. We are in a yellow space. We take no damage, but that's a minute to get around that hairpin. More fool me for thinking that gear two is never going to roll a hazard. Let's try to correct the error of our ways by doing something like this. Um, that's not good. Um, we can. Boost up to give four. So with all these uh, hazards on the tiles, I have to avoid going the racing line. Uh, so I'm going to have to do something like that uh, in order to keep my speed up. I can go flat out on those to get four focus and end in gear four, can't I? Uh, I absolutely can. Uh, make use of all these brakes while we have them. So drop down to gear one there. Uh, we can coast, coast, uh, come out in second gear, out in second gear, and then up to fourth gear again. Uh, I am not going to roll those flat out. I don't like these brake dice. They rolled well for me on this occasion. Uh, hazard on the coast. Second hazard on gear two. I'm going to learn my lesson and pay three focus to secure those final two dice. We need to break down to first gear and avoid the hazards and come out in second, second, boost up to fourth. And we can end our turn in gear five right before the dirt section. So uh, I am going to roll those one by one. See how far we get. One hazard on the break. Uh, one hazard on our second or our first coast rather. So um, I am going to, let's think, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, fifteen. That's too many focus to pay. So I'm going to risk rolling these gear two dice. That's more like it. Six focus to pay for the remaining three dice. Hopefully we've made up our time. Um, but I don't think something tells me that's that way. And if it isn't, I will tell myself that I was wrong. We can break down to second if we are in fourth. So I think we are instead going to be um, keeping our speed up for the time being. Um, that will be a short turn to end in fifth. Uh, we want to keep our speed up for this climb section. Um, so we're going to have to do a couple of short turns here. So let's do that uh, flat out on three dice. Uh, dropping into fourth and then sliding around the outside and emerging in fifth there will be our next uh, move. Uh, another flat out, just the one hazard. Then we can tackle the climb. Uh, again, we need to make use of a boost and a coast in order to respect the rules for the climb tile. But once we've done that, we can break down to second gear in order to come down to first and then coast and then I have another dice that I can use but I don't know where this course is going to take us in order to put it so um, I think that goes that way um, and then that will probably go like that 
I don't remember there being that many shortcuts on this part. Um, does that go over there? I think that goes like that. Uh, we'll we'll check that later. Uh, we are going to end there in second. Not brilliant for time, but because there's a gear one corner right after it, we might as well uh, just keep things steady in this section and generate the focus by going flat out. That will be lots of focus if we can pull it off, uh, which we can. We were very close to losing control. So there is not much left of Pike's Peak to conquer. I mean, it has seen us lose control a number of times, but we are getting there. Um, that's another climb. That must be like that. Is that looking right? Um, I know that we're coming to the finish and that's got a load of um, hairpins like that. So that looks all right. Uh, we need to be in gear one for the speed limit. We might have to go through some shortcuts here. Uh, let's go coast, coast two. Uh, can we break down to gear two only from gear four? So we need to be doing something like this and eke out that extra focus by going into the drift space so that will be another shortcut and another flat out roll because at this point it's a breeze to roll flat out our shortcut is minus one speed limit so that's not going to affect us at all we have some uh, tokens for the last two tiles I know that much uh, and we're in fifth gear now however we have to drop to gear four so that we can use our one and only break down to second gear. So we won't be able to boost up to uh, fifth gear. Um, that would put us there in second. And then we would have to, hmm, we could boost up to five at the start of our next turn, but then not have enough boost to get very far after that. Uh, so that will be a very short turn, but if we can get there, uh, then we can get to the finish line quicker. So I am going to do that again. I'm going to go flat out and come to a crash. Um, that's unfortunate. We are going to lose control in second gear at the minute. Second or first. Now, I don't really want to lose control at all, obviously, um, but I don't want to lose control so close to a climb space when I need to go down through the gears in order to um, make progress. So let's um, come here in fourth. Let's break down to two. Let's um, use the sliding spaces loss of control in first gear we're going to go gear one we're going to go gear two and then we're going to use both our boost die to get up to fifth gear at the start of this uh, climb we can't get any further unless we drop to fourth i don't want to drop to fourth in order to keep our time down so let's roll those flat out we need to go five and four and boost and a coast respecting the ascending rules uh, then we can break down to second gear uh, again we're only going to end in second gear um, but that'll set us up for the next corners do i want to roll those flat out um, at this point it saves me the time um two hazards it was close and we are coming to the final couple of tiles so on these last two tiles we can't make use of a coast die or we have one less uh, than whatever our dashboard allows so um, i'm not quite sure how we are going to make use of that 
do we go up to second and through the shortcut, boosting up to fourth and then into fifth. That will be close to finishing, but not quite close enough. Um, again, I'm gonna go flat out with those. Uh, we have another shortcut that we are going through. Uh, we haven't lost control. We are all okay for the shortcut. And then we can come across the line in fifth gear, go flat out on these two dice. Uh, just the one hazard as we cross the line in fifth gear at the top of Pike's Peak. The blue R5 looks an awful lot like a Peugeot 205 T16, which has made it to the top of Pike's Peak a few times. In 1987, Ari Vatanen took a broken 205 to a second place finish behind Walter Rawl in an Audi. Uh, we've not beaten either of those times. Rounding out the podium for the Rally Open class that year was Andrea Zanussi in his 205, but we've not beaten that time either. Nor have we beaten Shekhar Mater's 205 time. Uh, the good news is that we are the fourth fastest 205 T16 with a time of 11 minutes and 55 seconds. Unfortunately, that's slower than Malcolm Wilson's RS200, but it was close. Some smarter decisions with our turns and we could have been right up there. But we're still far off the Rallyman frontrunners. Most of you beat whatever times I post in the solo challenges on Board Game Geek, so I'll have to learn from you lot how best to tune my car for the next run up the mountain. Not hitting the high gears on the dirt was rather costly, so maybe we should swap out a coast die for another gear four. But what knock-on effect will that have on the rest of the car? Will it make it more likely to lose control each turn? Should we then sacrifice an entire die to open up a space on the dashboard for an extra hazard symbol? We'd be able to go flat out with even more confidence if we do, but what die don't we need? A coast? A boost? A gear? The only real way these questions will be answered is with more runs up the mountain. I guess I'll see you at the top or in the kitchen, as apparently it does fit on my floor. In either case, I will catch you next time.